Hi, I'm Miss Alessi, and today I am doing an artist interview with a landscape hobbyist, Brittany. Uh, hi, I'm Brittany, um, behavioral therapist and also a landscape artist. Sometimes I dabble in little jewelry. I paint. I put down like my memories, my thoughts, um, and I'm trying to have other people see them. Uh, sometimes it's filled with emotion, um, more details, and sometimes not so much. First, like, inspiration really came from trying to take a nap, and I was watching Bob Ross. Um, his voice is very soothing, but he was also creating cool landscapes. So then I was like, well, I think I could do that, too. So I just watched the videos, and that's how I came about these. So this is my first um, type of painting um, for landscapes. I, I tried drawing like, you know, three dimensional animals and people and I can't figure that one out yet. So I figured that this was a nice introduction to me blending colors because when you blend something dark and something light, that it makes a totally different color into black and white. I could choose and I could manipulate the paints. So that's where I really started from. I wanted to add more detail. Um, and give it like a different perspective, but kind of of the same place. So I, this one was more like at nighttime. I wasn't understanding like the shadows and stuff. So with this one, I wanted to add or figure out where the actual like light source was coming from. And then being like pictured like about to walk into the woods. So as it got deeper, I tried to spread it out. The colors that was a lot of fun because I started just with a little yellow, but then I was mixing them. Um, so then I came up with all this other cool stuff. I start with a canvas. So that's where I'm putting my paint on. And I usually, when I start painting, I either have a paint palette um, or a paper plate because I'm lazy. Then I get my brushes or um, I use a palette knife. So that I use that to make the mountains, little brushes. Um, but I tried to use like softer brushes to add in the details of what was I was trying to do as clouds. Sometimes see those brush strokes and it was a little bit frustrating. Um, so I first try and plan on where things are gonna go and especially like the horizon line. Like in this one, I definitely knew that I wanted to have more sky area than land. So that is, that's usually how I plan. So I know that whatever I want to focus on, I have to remember where I want to put it. I tried to do mountains, got frustrated with it. Um, so then I was like, well, I don't like how the end looked and I didn't, I couldn't figure out the pattern to using the brush. Um, so then I kind of just smudged it out and then put a new layer on. So then it was, okay, now I'm gonna plan on having it all come forward to me. It keeps on coming into my mind that I have to get it out. It was in the middle of the summer and there was this, uh, this full moon. So I was able to look up at the moon and where I was staying, it was really dark. Um, so that was like my motivation to get started. So I just brought what the essentials that I needed um, so I knew beforehand that I was going to need my brushes and a flashlight because it was dark. Anytime that I'm starting a painting, I think having the base of what I'm going to use with me when I'm about to start instead of having all scattered because my head is scattered. All right, so um, my motivation for this painting was really um, more of a memory for me, but this just reflects what I was seeing when I would be going to one of my favorite spots to stop and think. Some of it was done outside and some of it was also done like in, in my living room while I'm looking, um, while I was looking at something. I use a variety of different tools, so probably not too many, but I mostly work with paint, um, sometimes paper when I'm doing jewelry. In both these pictures, I use paint, but this one is an oil um, and I also use uh, um, gesso paint. So the gesso is a white paint that I put on first and once you start applying different colors on top of that burst of light, like it really makes the, the colors punch out and stand out to make it seem, you know, like kind of a cool 3D effect. 
Um, so that's especially here in the waterfall. In comparison to this picture, this is an acrylic base paint that I used. So it's kind of still muted in the colors. So that it's not as vibrant and sticking out as in this painting over here, especially in the shadows. These are both oil paintings. Um, I used uh, a sponge um, and to make all these little with the black paint because I, the gesso makes it darker with the colors that you put on it as opposed to the white gesso for the background. Um, so it was a nicer blend of the black and the brown together. So I just use my regular kitchen sponge because sometimes you just have to make do with what you got. So I use the bigger brushes, but then I really try to use the um, liner brush or very fine tip to put in these extra little details. It wouldn't make the painting a, like pop if you didn't have those just little something. I had a color wheel, so I was trying to see what was a complementary color. But I mean, I was doing like what is it? The greens and the red. And then the like yellow the and, and purple. purple. Oh. See how pretty it looks when it blends? Like oh You have God. all three pairs in there. I, and I didn't even know. <laughs> and I was painting one night and my nine-year-old son I wanted to check out what I was doing, so I got him on canvas, and so he was sitting down, and he started painting alongside of me. But this was, we were talking about the way to have, like, have the horizon in, so one technique to do that is to try and figure out where you want the grass to start going. He says, this, just this part is the sky. So he was really working on trying to have the sky go all the way down to keep on blending and pretty much go through the whole the whole painting. Background, um, so here he wanted just to have like, I don't know, a little area that was just clean because we like to go fishing. So he's always thinking about the water. With this one here, I was doing mountains. In this one, I was painting mountains. Um, and in this one, you can see how he started off with just this brown but then he was put in some red because i think he wanted to do a house at first so there's a little extra reddish brown here so then he just started making new layers and i was painting mountains so he did the same thing but he also added in a really cool waterfall that came down um so he didn't have to at first he was like oh i made a mistake but when you're painting and you're doing art, it's not really a mistake because you can always try and create something else with it or just put something on top of it. Um, and it gives you another added something. So with this painting, I had a palette of dark colors because I had just bought new paints. There were some colors I didn't know um, because I wanted to see how light stuff was and how dark. Um, so I was able to mix and that was a good way to start to see the colors as they blended and I knew when to stop. I wasn't quite in a great mood. I was kind of feeling dark um, and there's lots of commotion going on. I was using the black and blue to kind of show that emotion to it. Um, so I went outside and I saw the moon. So I was like, okay, yeah, 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 it's pretty. You can kind of see my brush strokes and how some of them got really close together and I was kind of like digging when it like rubbing really hard. And then my pressure started to lighten up on the painting just to try and express more emotions and get it out of myself because it's not always good to keep all the emotions in. I, these are sister pictures, my rough draft of what I was trying to get down. Um, I wasn't exactly quite happy with the way that it came out. The picture that I wanted to put on doesn't fit the frame. This painting, the canvas is turning upwards. This is the way that the picture should have looked. So I needed to change my first idea and revise, refine, rethink, replan to get out what I wanted to accomplish in the first place. If, I, if, if it's a new task uh, that I don't know or new technique, I like to do a little practice of it first. Um, so that's really what I was doing in 
this picture here. I really needed to kind of figure out how to use the proper material. Um, and if it was new, I had to know how to properly take care of it as well. This is my last painting that I completed. I did repurpose the, the canvas that it's on. I had originally tried to do a landscape like this one that involved water. There's still texture that's on the canvas from, from when I first tried. And also you can probably see just a little bit of, of what would I had as a wave there. Um, so there's, and there's texture and there is a waterfall back here. Like there's ripple effect. I wanted to have a moon. I blended and blended and blended and blended and then blended some more. So when I got frustrated, I walked away and then came back to it when I was like, I'm just going to cover that up and start over again on this canvas that I'm already reusing. Why waste it? Because you get something pretty cool because I wouldn't have had those textures and it was a mistake. I covered it up. I moved on. Stuff, traumas happened and I had to feel, move on from it. Um, but with also creating a memory that share that I share and so special to me. Um, I always had this favorite tree um, and I don't know, it just always brought a smile to my face. And I remember coming home and it was winter and there's a beautiful sunset. I think that sometimes expressing your emotions is very good for you, but it's also good for you to show other people. Um, especially if it's something that you care about and others would understand what you're saying if you can't put it in words. My grandparents, um, so this is a memory for me um, because my sister passed away when I was, when I was young um, and my grandparents passed away very soon after. So I was a young teenager when I lost three very important people in my life, but this tree was always in my dreams when I was dreaming about them. That's the story behind this painting and it just has such a special meaning to me. Um, so this painting here, um, it's part of joy in my life. I have a, a nine-year-old son and he enjoys fishing um, and this is what I was looking at as my son was fishing um, and instead of just using something that was in my mind I was actually seeing, seeing it and how to put it down and it was just a special day because it was just really cool. We caught frogs and fish and it was beautiful there. Well it depends on the different tools that I'm using. Um, when I am painting I like to make sure that I have um, like a cleaner station and when I'm starting to do everything I make sure I have all my paints and my water to clean up um, and I only use as much paint as I need. But when it comes to the brushes, I make sure that those are washed and cleaned right away. I use acrylic sometimes and I also use oil. So I have to make sure those two brushes are cleaned differently. Um, but at my house, I have one spot that's designated for my painting um, because that spot is my sanctuary. For me, it's best to clean up as you go and know what you're going to be using to make sure that you're able to maintain a clean workspace. No, not usually. Well, barely ever. When I'm drawing or painting, I'm usually outside, um, but I do sometimes draw from my memory. So this is more of a, a, from my mind's eye. This one is like ingrained in my head. This is a picture that I see every day while I'm driving. It's something that's always with me. When things are long. Sometimes I only have a short amount of time. I have a quick time frame, so I'll get something small done, but stuff that, um, needs more time I'll go back to it so most of the paintings that I have it's there's a never really an end date because I have it there and I learn new things and so I can put it back up so I guess it all depends on on what you can do um, I really love it because I have so many different ideas that come to me and um, so this is one way that I can keep everything together I write and I draw when I'm paying attention because I have to multitask, whether it's the teacher telling me a topic or if I'm at a work function and somebody's speaking, I could keep my hands moving instead of fidgeting my whole entire body because anyway, that's my ADD, there we go. I love Gerber daisies um, and this one was just very special to me because this is one of my first ones that I was using um, with my different tools. Um, I was listening to a concert um, and the music was just really nice and relaxing. And this is where the music took me to. 
um, and I was able to take my time with it and appreciate what I was doing. So I've been making thank you cards and different cards for my friends and family. Um, so I just, and they keep on telling me, why don't you start a business? I'm going to try and start my own little SD shop, I guess. Uh, so either way, I'm going to go outside my comfort zone a little bit and make cards, paper. So I'm going to do my own, my own type um, of card and blank envelopes. Um, I have some ideas for like um, a little logo, just like on this here. Um, it came with this other person's logo. So you, someone's like, oh, where'd you get that card? They'll be like, oh, my friend made it. And there you have it. And I have a good friend who is a hobbyist too. She's, she's cool. And she taught me how to make her paper beads. So all these little itty bitty multicolored ones, those are all made out of paper. As I'm watching TV relaxing, I can't really relax. So I cut my paper and I sit on my couch and I make this stuff and it's kind of like my, my comfort um, and a way to help relax myself. Um, and I also like it because I could quietly play with them too because they roll around. Um, so that was actually when I was in elementary school. He just always took time to come up to each one of us and give us a little extra um, and just to give give excellent pointers. So happens that she is now my son's art teacher. So it's pretty cool. So the thing that I remember most, because I mean, she was probably my second grade teacher. So it was quite some time. So I always liked her approach to things because it was all nature based. You know, she always was adding something more. So I think that's probably why I always geared towards more of a landscape with her encouragement look how far I came from when I first started so I thought she's pretty cool not just art students all students um, and applies to art and math and history and English and all everything else try your best you know if you're not trying then what you don't know what you can do and just like when you're learning how to read or learning how to ride a bike you have to try it first and then with time, things will get better. Don't get down on yourself because then you can't grow, you know, and to, to move forward to something that you're stuck on, you can only get better from there, you know? So just try your best and do what you can. Nobody's perfect, nobody's asking for perfection, but what you think is good, it's always gonna be good enough.